I want to talk a little bit about your inspiration, and we, we spoke about how, you know, you said Bob Marley is one of them. Now, um, what we interviewed Papa San earlier this year, and he made a good point about Rastafarians and how they don't have a church, um, but most of what they do is music, and it serves as, as the driving force behind their religious movement. So it, it, it speaks to us because it, it says that music is undeniably powerful. Um, what about the music of Bob or, like, say, Bujabantan is, is organic enough to cause you and, and so many others to identify it as spiritual? And how is your work similar to that? Well, if my work is similar in any way, uh, I'm honored. I mean, I think, I think uh, specifically Bob, I mean, he, as a writer, I'm absolutely, my, he, he more than any other writer of all time blows my mind as far as how he integrated social climate, spirituality, and just a, a, a sort of a, a lyric ready for the streets and the people. I mean, to capture culture, what that culture was going through, lean into God, lean into their God, uh, Ja, and, and to also really be the voice of the people on the street. I mean, that is just, that's masterful writing in my mind. Like, that's exactly what I want to do. You know what I mean? I want to I wanna say, here's, here's where society is, here's our need for God, and also at the same time speak into direct social issues. I mean, and, and, and he just continued to point people to the spiritual side of it, much like a Martin Luther King. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I can I can only say that it that you know I strive to, to be able to connect the way he connected, mm -hmm. and uh, to be able to voice the things he voiced. Sure, we believe differently, but I, I still am inspired by his writing. Emancipate yourself from mental slavery. I mean, seriously, it's it's organic it's so natural it's like you're not trying you're just being and and I feel that I mean there are similarities I mean I just in me surveying your work and his so well, well, well thank you <laughs> yeah <laughs> now okay speaking of Jamaica now uh, the bulk of our audience is in New York and South Florida and we have a very large uh, Caribbean following and we know you married a beautiful Jamaican woman and um, <laughs> I want to ask you about her. What stood out about her to you? Among all the American girls you went to school with, what about her was so beautiful? Well, I went, she, you know, we didn't go to school together. She went to a school about um, 45 minutes from my school. She went to all-girls university. Mm -hmm. uh, and I met a Jamaican friend at my school. I'll, I'll just give you a quick backstory. But, because okay. uh, I, I mean, ultimately I can answer your question, but, and, and the Jamaican girl that went to my school kept telling me about her friend that was going to come to school 45 minutes from her. And she said, will you drive me this year because she didn't have a car? And I said, yeah. And she was like, well, you just know you're going to fall in love with her. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, you know, whatever. Uh, but I know when I walked down the hall of her dorm and I was walking with this other girl, Nicola, and she's like, that's a man and she was like probably a couple hundred feet down the hall from us like it was just odd because I knew that that was that was my girl you know what I mean it, it was on right there uh, so I mean without a doubt you know her beauty her beauty drew me in but as I began to get to know her I think it was the, uh, the beauty and the freedom that she had in, in, in her relationship with Christ it was just her family the way in, in most Jamaicans the way they view a relationship with God is just different than in the States. I grew up in a very sort of legalistic, play by the rules, God is rules thing. And, and I, when I got with her family and I went to Jamaica and I experienced the way they love God, there was such a freedom and a joy in it. And uh, it wasn't boxed in. And you, you went out, you had fun, you experienced life. But at the same time, you were a reflection of, of the Savior. And I mean, it was just, I had never seen anything like it or experienced anything like it. And it, it just rocked my world. And I fell in love with her and as well her family in, in, in the country of Jamaica. Sweet. Um, now, do you have a favorite Jamaican saying that you, <laughs> that you like, uh, love to use? <laughs> you know, one thing I love Jamaicans, when, when, like, that they, when they say they have a cold in their back or a cold in their like, when, when Jamaican's foot hurts, they say, man, Toby, me have a cold in my foot. 
I'm like, you have a cold in your butt. <laughs> like, I love that, man. That that always trips me out. It means their foot hurt, right? Or their back hurts, but they got a cold. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I know. We have a weird th- weird things like that's um, that's my family. So I'm like. I, I um I completely understand. I don't know if this is like a Levy household one or, or a typical Jamaica. You could probably tell me. You sound like you're from from Jamaica. Mm-hmm. Um, they say uh, greedy choke puppy. You know that one? Wait, say it again. Greedy choke puppy. Greedy choke puppy. I don't know puppy? if that's just yeah. Like like in other words, the the pup. No, no. What is it? Greedy choke puppy. Yeah, like the greediest puppy, like. You know, trying to get the most out of her mom, it, like uh, the puppy, and it chokes and dies because it was being greedy. Like anyway, she no, it's seriously like that. That's how weird the sayings are. I'm so I'm so glad that you brought up one like that because yeah, it was it, just like I I didn't know if that's just in their house or I don't know if it's a tip. I haven't heard a lot of Jamaicans say, but they're always a like, greedy choke puppy boy. You know, like when you want when you try to get too much and you're not satisfied. Right, with, you're you know. not satisfied with what you have. That's really yeah. funny. Um, I'm sure our audience is going to love this, by the way. <laughs> Toby Mac is using his Jamaican thing. Um, okay. I mean, now, you know, I, this, and this is a typical blouse and skirt. I love that, too. I oh, still don't know what it means. But <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like, it, it's almost a swear, but it's not. And I, <laughs> right. I love saying it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, Americans can get by with that for sure, you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. you just say it, and, and they're like, what you just say? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, the, just don't say it in Jamaican church because it's just, it, it might be considered like a, a, little, a little offensive if you do, but. <laughs> yeah, I, I believe me, I've made the mistake of taking home a few words to uh, to where the ladies live, you know, from, you know, you know, just like rotted and, and misleading. Like, <laughs> shouldn't really say that. I'm like, really? I just, I, I just thought I meant dang. <laughs> It, it, it's it's wow. Oh, and did you say it in like church circles or was it just like? Well, no, I just said it at their house. I said it in the house. Yeah. Believe yeah. me, I was careful not to go into the the other R A uh, word. Oh, <laughs> oh thank God. I'm not going to break down the Ross or anything like that. <clears throat> oh, thank God, Toby. He just <laughs> yeah. But rotten is a little less than that, right? Well, I'm, no, no, it is a little less than that. It's it's closer to darn, but I think it's. It's still a swear, but uh, okay. <laughs> you, well, you don't want to you don't want to use it, you know, in in, in, sensitive, in circles that are a little sensitive about language and, and definitely not around children. 